The only simplicity to be trusted is the simplicity to be found on the far side of complexity. Alfred North Whitehead. That, of course, means that we need to understand the complexity and how we have to cut out the noise so we can hear and see and understand the signal. That's what we do here. That's what I talk about almost every day on the introduction to you guys is how important it is for you to understand that price movement is the only thing that matters. I appreciated so many of the comments here over the last week from people talking about what they've heard on the news and how those folks are accountable for nothing they say. They will say the exact opposite of what happens that day or even during that day. One of y'all's comments was that. And that the, the reporters or whatever you want to call the, the news readers, whatever they might be, analysts, some of them, are not responsible for anything they say. And again, we don't listen to them. We don't pay attention to them. We don't care what they have to say. We, have to, we, we only care about what's actually real and what's happening. And that's what I want you to focus on. Now, we're going to go over these charts, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, as represented by QQQ, TLT, 20-year bonds, and gold. All of them are up for the day. The biggest is the NASDAQ 100, followed by the SPY, that is the S&P 500. And, of course, we've been tracking our current practice trades that we have going on on bonds and gold, and they are up nicely, quite nicely. Those of you who have been tracking uh, the jumping in point that we gave on those and where we are, and what do we see happening as we get into the S&P 500 and the Qs and what they're doing as we see weekly vertical crossovers setting up about to occur. Have a special training for you today for everyone who is a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, go to chartingwealth.com for free. Sign up, put in your email address name. List is never spammed, never shared. It's to send out the information to you. And we have a special training that'll be in your show notes for all these subscribers about committing a little time each day for success. I can't tell you how important it is. I say it over and over again. I don't say this to sell you anything. I don't say it as a joke. I don't say it to just put something else in your day. 10 to 15 minutes a day listening. Another comment that I got from from a listener was, I do the daily market worksheet every day. It is amazing what it's done for me. And I'm like, yes, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. You're exactly correct. If you want to supercharge your training, print out for free the daily market worksheets. They're in all the show notes. If you're listening to the podcast, the YouTube channel, wherever, look in the show notes. You'll see PDFs, daily market, uh, the, the daily market worksheet, the weekly market worksheet, and the trade worksheet. So the practice trades that we have underway right now, those of you who are in those, you should have filled out your trade worksheet. I know so many of you want to learn to trade options. You want to be successful. So many of you have tried and have lost everything you've ever tried in options, maybe in investing, period. I am committed to teaching you options, but I'm going to teach you how to successfully practice trade options so that at some point you can go out and use your own money when you make up your own mind, and again, we're not a stock calling service, we're an education firm, but I want you to understand how important it is. First and foremost, you've got to understand the basics, and the basics are to be able to tell whether or not the market is going up or down. If you can't do that, you will lose everything when you get into options. And again, want you to learn things every step of the way. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how the book Optionable Wealth is developing. I'll do that at the end of the broadcast today, but I've got ideas about helping you build a wealth development plan through the use of options, then your own personal hedge fund. And I'll talk a little more about that and tell you what I've been thinking as the book has been coming about and molding. And of course, we do have for sale Charting Your Way to Wealth. Uh, that's available. Look in the show notes. 
As whatever the hell the noise is going on outside, I apologize, but I'm going to knock this out. We're going to hop in right now. What do we see going on with the S&P 500? Well, like I said, it was up for the day, but it's down for the week. This long tail on the bottom shows you the pullback that has been underway as to where the bottoms that it reached all the way down to a low of 181.72 so far, but it has pulled back on that. And again, we do see the potential of a crossover, a weekly vertical crossover by the end of the week. That won't happen until Friday, uh, if indeed it occurs. If we have a huge, huge update, it may pull back through it. In fact, we've already seen the derivative oscillator that was red most of the week go green on SPY. So again, keep our powder dry. Pay close attention to what is going on and figure out where this is going. We look at the two-day chart. What do we see there? Well, this is the first day of the latest two-day candle. It's the first green candle we've seen in six days. This is just the first day, so we don't call the candle yet, but we can see it pushing through the red signal line. If it's a big down day tomorrow, it could push back through and go below the two-day trend line. Did I say signal? A trend line. So it's pushed through the two-day trend line. Price percent oscillator, which was heading down, strongly down, has actually flattened out. It's not completely flat yet, still heading down, but the derivative oscillator is continuing to gain downward momentum. But we see a green spinning top means indecision tending up. Not a whole lot of indecision, but some. We go to the four-hour chart. We had a crossover going up at the end of the day. Basically, we had a strong day of up movement, the first strong day of up movement that we've seen in a while. Green open box candles, that's the strongest up movement that we see with wicks on top, no wicks on the bottom, going green on the derivative oscillator and crossing over on the four hour. Now that's our smallest and weakest of the charts. It's the smallest wave, but it did push through the two day trend line. So we'll see how that continues to comport itself on Friday and where things go at the end of the week, and if we do have a weekly vertical crossover. Typically, friends, what do these weekly vertical crossovers mean? They mean down movement for a week, 10 weeks, however many weeks, but when we look back in time, we can see over and over again, there are there, there's one time, if we go all the way back to 2017, where we can see a false crossover that really never, uh, well, didn't, didn't happen too well, uh, very little, but then crossed back over going down and got sloppy. And then, uh, I mean, again, we're, we're going all the way back to 2017 to find a little bit of sloppiness. What we have seen lately are typically decent moves. The last move was short but tradable. But again, this one, we just want to continue to watch, see what there is to see. Remember when the summertime trading zone. So this is this is a hard time to trade. Why? Not a lot of volume in the market, a lot of skittishness as we have seen. So we'll continue to watch, see what there is to see. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100 on the weekly chart. What do we see there? Well, Again, we see a strong down candle with a pullback on it with that long wick on the bottom. See a crossover. The derivative oscillator has gone from red to green. It was red at the beginning of the week. This crossed over earlier than the S&P 500. There's been more up movement on the NASDAQ 100 after the big down time at the beginning of the week. But we do, again, see that the derivative oscillator is positive. Price percent oscillator, our main indicator, is still crossing over. Go to the two-day chart. Similar to the S&P 500, it's pulled through the trend line on the two-day chart. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Price percent oscillator flattening out, but still heading down. Four-hour chart looks somewhat similar. Up in the morning, crossing over in the afternoon. So again, we're going to see how things shape up on Friday and look to see if we want to consider a jumping in point Friday afternoon, as we did this last week with TLT that so far has been successful. So that would be an inverse trade on either the NASDAQ 100 
or the S&P 500. We might practice both of those. Again, we're going to wait and see. Make that call at the end of the day. Again, if you're not a subscriber to our texting service, you have to live in the States. I'm sorry it doesn't work overseas, but text the word charting wealth, one word, charting wealth, to the number 33222. Put you on that list service and we will email, we'll text you every time that we have a weekly vertical crossover. Don't know what a weekly vertical crossover is? Boy, we explain it well in the book. I have lots of good trainings at the website for you. In that regard, it is our most powerful indicator. It's when the price percent oscillator crosses over the red signal line and it typically portends a substantial opportunity to have a successful practice trade worth many dollars. We find it over and over and over again. It works. That's why we do it. So again, that's where we are on the queues. We're going to leave stocks, go to bonds. Remember, we are in a bond trade right now. That is the practice trade where we jumped in at the end of last week at about 355. One thing I didn't do that I'm going to start doing for you guys too is I'm going to open up an options montage, an options chain, and I'm going to do buys of both in the money, at the money, or near the money, as they call it, and out of the money. And I'm going to do those buys, and we're going to track how successful those options trades are and how high they get. Now, again, that's dependent on my time and energy to be able to track all of that for you. I'm going to encourage you guys, particularly the retired folks that listen or the students, people who have time, to help me track those two, because remember, those options change minute to minute, depending on the volatility in the market, price, time, all the things that go on. So we want to track how successful those are. A jumping in point on TLT on Friday, the 2nd of August, was at 136.29 at 355. We have hit a high over the course of the week of 143.06. That's pretty darn good, up about $9. Not, not bad. Not bad for less than a week. That's how to capture up moves, my friends. So we'll continue to watch. We see a nice big green up candle up for the day, 0.21% derivative. Oscillator gaining upward momentum. Price percent oscillator going up even higher. Go from the weekly to the two-day chart. What do we see there? See, a bit of a pullback. Now, remember, this is a red open box candle, not a solid red candle, but it's showing you some caution. That's what we see forming on the two-day chart. Hasn't reached as high high as it did back at the 143.06 level. Highest it's gone over the course of the first day of this latest two-day candle is 140.43. We see the price percent oscillator gaining upward momentum derivative. I'm sorry. Price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum. We go from the two-day chart to the four-hour chart. And this is where we get a, a closer view of where things topped out on Wednesday afternoon and then Wednesday morning, rather, and then started slowing down Wednesday afternoon down on Thursday, up a morning, up a little bit in the afternoon. Price percent oscillator just about flat heading down a little derivative oscillator has gone negative. Now that's the four hour chart, so we'll pay attention to that. Don't want to lose what we have gained, but at the same time, want to keep gaining, don't we? We want to see how this is going to sort out what Friday is going to show us. Now again, we can cash out at any time. You cash out when things pound up. People always say, what is our buy and what is our sell point? Well, we're, we're establishing with you those rules on the buy points, just simple, hard and fast rules that work. Then what is the sell point? I tell folks all the time, when you're looking for a sell point, there's a number of things you can do. If you're doing your practice trades, and when you get into real trading, you will know the season that you're in. You will know sort of where things have been lately as to what the pop-up point is, where you can capture the most, and sort of where to stop. What I saw over the course of the, of the, the trading that I have done so far over this time period is around three and a half to four and a half percent on things like um, the QQQ, which is, of course, those of you who follow this for all, you know that's my favorite, uh, that, that is absolutely my favorite ETF, the NASDAQ 100. And again, so that's where 
your, your notes, your daily market worksheets, your weekly market worksheets, and your trade worksheets will show you because you calculate what your gain was. And you learn over and over and over again, or when you see high points that you missed and you go back and say, why didn't I sell there? And you realize, well, gosh, that was, that was a 4.5% gain. I could have captured that. And in fact, if I look at the successful trades I've done in the last season or over time in this season, because uh, I've been doing it for years, it's about 35 to 4.5%. So when I hit those marks, I should capture that. If it starts backing off, sell, take my profit, and move on. Or take half my profit. Let the rest of it ride and see where that goes. Setting up your profit points is good. Also, just saying, hey, I'm going to ride out the weekly chart. And as long as the two-day and the weekly remain strong, I'll stay in and I'll learn from that. And again, even when you're real money trading in the future, you want to make sure you continue to practice trade. That's how you learn new ETFs, new stocks. That's how you, that's how you condition yourself for success, not for simply going in and trading or investing blind. If you want to get screwed over and over and over and over again, that's the way you do it. You act like an idiot and you go in and just throw money at stuff like you're gambling in Vegas. I don't like Vegas. I don't like gambling. I don't do it. And there's a reason because it's dangerous and it doesn't work. The house always wins. Now, lastly, we're going to go to gold. Gold, we can see our weekly chart. Nice, big, up candle in gold. And of course, what was our jumping in point in gold? We jumped into our gold trade on Monday, the 5th of August at 3.55 in the afternoon at 137.82. What's been our high? 142.47. That's not bad. Just during the course of a few days with this bump up and up move, that is in fact very, very nice. Now, as we look, we see that the price percent oscillators continuing to spike up, derivative oscillators losing some energy. And let's look and see why that is happening. Look at the two-day chart. You can see on the two-day chart that this first day of this latest candle, there is a bit of a blow-off of some steam, not reaching as high a high as we did on the prior two-day candle ending Wednesday the 7th. Derivative oscillators gaining upward momentum. Price percent oscillator nonetheless is heading up. That's good and strong to see. And we get the the near picture as we jump into the four-hour chart. That's where we saw things top on the morning of Wednesday the 7th and really sliding sideways since then. And that's where we see some of that inherent weakness in the devolving of the derivative oscillator. But the price percent oscillator still heading up strongly, like I said, gold up for the day 0.50%. Price is well above the two-day and the weekly. So gold is looking good. Friends, that's where we are as we end the day on Thursday. Going to the last trading day of the week, we will complete that two-day candle. We'll also make the calls on whether or not the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 have achieved weekly vertical crossovers. We'll keep our eye on our practice trades on 20-year bonds and gold. And again, the book that I am working on, the new book, Optionable Wealth, we are really focusing on helping you develop a wealth creation plan using options, starting off with as little as $2,500 in options, and working your way through that with 20% trades is what we would like to see until you amass about $50,000. And then at that point, you start creating your own personal hedge fund that you use our printing press technique to jump in and out of with dividends, uh, helping increase the flow into that account, as well as things like covered calls and perhaps using the money from covered calls to buy puts to further accelerate when things roll over and start moving down. When you buy your stocks or your ETFs in that personal hedge fund, the goal is never to sell those, is to actually drive your basis to zero and to continue to increase that fund where it becomes basically your own sovereign wealth fund. We're going to be talking a lot more about those things, which I've covered very quickly in a few hundred pages in our book, Optionable Wealth. So 
Stay tuned for that. It is a work in progress. He hadn't purchased our current book that is available in its 11th printing. Have an autographed copy for you. You can do so by simply looking in the show notes under Buy the Book, and you can buy Charting Your Way to Wealth. We'll be happy to send an autographed copy off to you. If you live overseas, you cannot use the Square. For some reason, it won't clear foreign credit cards. However, if you'll simply email us, cw at chartingwealth.com, that's our email address, we will send you an invoice through PayPal. You can pay that, and we'll send you a book wherever you are in the world. God bless, my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.